One of the things that made the Super Bowl advertisement so exciting was for the first time we saw some real innovation. There were two spots in particular that really evolved the playbook. The first was the Doritos and Mountain Dew ad. I mean, the idea of Morgan Freeman and Peter Dinklage having a rap lip sync battle was just a fantastic concept that broke new ground because never before did you have two brands going head to head in one commercial to the benefit of both of the brands. The second and the big winner of the night was this is a Tide spot. Tide really played a new deck of cards on this one that was smart. It made you think constantly, what's the next ad that Tide's going to hijack? So Tide was on your mind the entire evening and they did a great job of reinforcing it throughout the game with various ads. This year's crop of Super Bowl ads also included some real losers. Our number one biggest loser for the Super Bowl ads was an entry by Diet Coke called Twisted Mango. A young lady who almost looks anorexic and awkward, what's the emotional connection we're supposed to make with her? Who's the target audience for that and how does that represent the brand? This one was a real stinker. Number two was Keanu Reeves with Squarespace. What are you selling? What's the emotional connection you're trying to make and with whom? And at the end of the day, people were left asking, well, what does Squarespace do for me? Also, not a particularly good entry. And last but not least was Stella Artois with Matt Damon. Matt Damon's the wrong brand ambassador for the Stella Artois brand. International, sophisticated, refined palate. Matt Damon is a good old American boy. This was a mismatch from a brand standpoint. Yes, they were trying to do good by pairing up with water.org, but it really didn't help the Stella Artois brand. Not well played. One of the biggest misperceptions about what makes for a great Super Bowl advertisement is which lens do you use to judge the quality of the Super Bowl ad? One approach is what was great entertainment for the masses? Was it funny? Did it make us laugh? Did we have a good time watching it? Will people chatter about it? The other, which is the appropriate lens by which to judge if your $5 million was well spent, is did it move your specific target audience to take an action? If it did, then you had a great ad. Two examples of this this year were the M&M ad with Danny DeVito. The association of Danny DeVito when thinking about eating an M&M, not a great play. Was it funny? Was it entertainment? Sure but really poor association, not a smartly played ad. The second was Alexa. Amazon's entry was entertaining, but it really was all over the place. Which of the four different celebrities in that ad actually should be the brand ambassadors for Alexa that we should identify with? Secondly, making fun of the questions of the people who are asking Alexa for help certainly doesn't reinforce the brand and I don't think helped Alexa particularly in this case. As in years past, advertisers are looking for ways to extend their commercial beyond the actual airing. For example, the way Bud did with the Was Up commercials. This year you had a couple of interesting entries, perhaps most notably the Pringles commercial, Wow. They really were looking for a catchphrase that hopefully can extend beyond the Super Bowl. Time will tell if they did it well. So how do we judge if it was a great commercial versus being just great entertainment for the masses? To that end, we've created a proprietary approach called the Warshawski Best Model to judge which are the best ads in any setting. So how does it work? Well, the B stands for, is it brand centric? E, does it make an emotional connection with the target audience? S, does it stand out and is it memorable? And T, was there a clear target audience that they were going after and was there a business goal where we can say target achieved? We rate each of these on a scale of 1 to 10 with 40 being the highest score. Now, who scored the best and who scored the worst for us? Here are our top 10 winners. And here are our top 10 losers of this year's Super Bowl ad crop.
I look forward to seeing you next year to discuss the Super Bowl ads. In the meantime, all of us at Warshawski wish you the best of marketing communications this year that always scores against your competition.